Okay, so first deal, bought, sold. Any time in that, um, after you purchased it and before you sold it, that you were, you know, with your wife, you know, just you and her, and you were confessing, and you're like, I don't know if this is, I did the right thing. Like, I'm having oh, yeah. Yeah, serious definitely. doubts. Yeah, oh, yeah. okay. Was yeah, it on everything from just finding the handyman or wanting to just, even just doubting the home? I mean, was it a little, like, just was it the whole situation or was it mainly the home? For, um, was it, it, it was, I, I guess it was kind of both. It wasn't even so much the home. I think it was the whole situation. Um, I guess just mobile home investing overall, you know, I, I'm like, you know, because, I go to the real estate meetups or, you know, talk to some people and everyone's in single family. And so you kind of just know, you're like, oh, that works out. That's, you know, you already know that that works. Um, but the mobile home thing, there's no one else that I can talk to about it. There's no one around <laughs> locally. No. Um, so I'm like, I don't know if this is going to work. And, you know, it, it might work, you know, in other areas, you know, maybe it doesn't work in the Detroit area. I don't know. All right, welcome back. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. This is John Fedge with MobileHomeInvesting.net sitting here with Randy from Michigan. Thank you so much, Randy, for, for being here. Yeah, thanks, John, for having me. This is awesome. Yeah, it was a quick, impromptu uh, call. I appreciate you being available. And I'm just so happy. I really want to do this video with you. It's your first deal. Um, definitely a newbie, first of many. Absolutely. Um, but you've had this roller coaster ride of kind of <laughs> emotions and doubts and fears and then and then pushing through it, you know, forgetting all what happened in the past, just pushing through it. We all have those fears and anxieties um, and pushing through it and then getting this deal done. So I want to talk to you not only about the deal, but also kind of what you were going through, what you saw um, and then the decision you had to make to, you know, get this deal done like you already in it. And so let's talk about kind of all that. Um, do me a favor and like a quick kind of recap of you. Have you been investing in real estate for your whole life or is this new to you and then mobile homes this is obviously new to you as well uh yeah mobile homes is definitely new um real estate uh probably been a couple years um i actually own a single family rental uh, about four blocks from my primary residence um and like i said i bought that about two years ago um been thinking about real estate a lot uh and then the mobile home uh thing i actually heard uh you on a podcast and um so that was very interesting and uh, just looking into it definitely liked uh, the low cost entry and definitely seemed like you know even if I was going to make a bunch of mistakes um, I won't have as much money uh, you know tied up and you know possibly lose so uh, that was intriguing to me. So the mobile homes uh, that just the mobile home investing was intriguing you made the decision you're going to start it we got started together. I mean, yeah. we've been emailing now, you know, for, yeah. well, just for regularly. For a while. Yeah. yeah, and, yeah. And, yeah. And, and regularly, I mean, detailed emails back and forth. Right. And from the very beginning, when did, how long before you first got started to, you know, when you first closed that very first deal and were there failures in between? You know, did you make offers and they just weren't accepted or did anybody back out or because I know in the beginning there was just some, again, anxiety, a little bit of hesitation. Yeah. yeah what were your thoughts there? Because this is completely new. I mean, starting yeah. a new business is terrifying sometimes. Yeah. Just, <laughs> so, yeah, what was going through your mind there and then what did you see? And then eventually you did get to that, you know, the seller that you closed. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, first, I mean, when we first, you know, got started with you, um, you know, I, I started initially, uh, and then honestly, like I kind of just, you know, I kind of got busy with life, and I just kind of put it on the back burner. In all honesty, um, and so there was a um, good amount of months there where I really didn't do anything active at all. I mean, probably up to six to eight months or so where I wasn't really doing anything. Um, I always, you know, kind of knew I'm like I want to get to this, but it's just it wasn't happening, and my personal self motivation just wasn't there at the time. Um, so, but, uh, and then, sorry, what was the rest of your question? Oh, well, everything from when you first got started. So, okay, so then you got started, and then life got in the way. You were also, I imagine some part of your mind was, you know, I got to, because if life gets in the way, you're, I would think that you're thinking, well, I don't have time to focus starting this whole new business, so let me get all this settled. Right. And then I can focus on the, so then that eventually did happen when you kind of buckled down and, 
you know, nose to the yeah. grindstone. Yeah, I definitely thought, like, initially, especially as I was going through the course and all, um, I initially thought, like, man, I don't know if, like you said, I don't know if I'm going to have enough time for this. I don't know if, you know, I'm going to be able to make this work. Uh, you know, there's people out there that are doing it full time or they're doing it every day, all day long. And, you know, I don't, I don't have the, I don't have the time to do that. And, you know, and if I can't do that much time, then can I even make this work at all? Um, so that was just, you know, and, and I mean, I'm pretty skeptical overall. Um, I've been burned in the past just from like infomercial stuff that I, I should have never bought anyway. Um, so I'm pretty like skeptical when it comes to a lot of things. Um, and so, you know, if something isn't, uh, I, I don't know, just like, I don't know, I kind of, I guess I just kind of am really cautious and I'm just like, well, if I can't put enough time into it, then maybe it's just not going to be worth it and it's not going to work out and I don't, and time is really, really important to me sure. and so I don't want to, uh, you know, waste any time, you know, doing something that's not going to work out anyway. Um, but like you said, I had to kind of really push through it and I keep seeing people on Facebook and the, in the Facebook group. And I'm like, well, they're doing it, and they're doing it, and they're doing it. And I'd see some of the videos similar to this where the success, you know, I saw, um, I don't remember her name at this moment, but she has like two kids, and she's like taking her kids to go to appointments and stuff. And so she's making, you know, she's making it work. Um, so I'm like, well, okay, this is obviously just in my head. And, you know, I kind of have to just do what I can when I can and keep making, you know, the steps forward. Excellent. And you have, I, I know your, your wife was support, was supportive as well, is very supportive as well. Yeah. Yeah. She is definitely supportive. Uh, you know, she, she definitely doesn't want me gone all the time. Um, I'm a firefighter, so I work 24 hour shifts. Right. Um, so I'm essentially gone like, you know, a week and a half, uh, during a month. And so any, you know, more time, like if I'm gone for two, three more days, like doing something that kind of does affect her as far as just getting stuff done around the house, we got two little kids. So, uh, you know, she kind of wants to get some other stuff done and kind of have me around to help out. So, of course. Uh, Did, so yeah. So now, in the beginning, you mentioned about not wasting time, um, something that we all aren't get again any more of. The right. um, did you feel like you were spinning your wheels at all? I mean, when you first did, when you were, you know, the module number one, um, you know, getting started. When you did actually kind of put that, yeah, pedal down. Um, yeah. Were you finding sellers? Were you having how many sellers? I guess this is kind of a would be a good or a good question. How many sellers were you talking to? Did you make offers to prior to um, finding the seller that was your was your first deal? Um, oh man, I talked to I talked to probably uh, at least a couple dozen sellers. You know, on the phone anyway. Um, I went to probably six to ten appointments maybe and looked at homes um, and there were even some homes that I kind of knew even talking to them on the phone that I probably wasn't gonna want or it was gonna be too expensive or something uh, but I really am super new to the mobile home thing so I was like well I got the time I'll go out just take a look at this home and you know I'll, I'll take the pictures and you know send them back to you and I'll learn something at, at the same moment and just I just kind of took it all as a as a learning process so and when I buckled down for the modules, like I said, I took some time off there. And when I buckled down for me personally, like I went through all the modules first, and I was literally like taking notes. I have a whole bunch of a big stack of lined paper of just you know just all the stuff, so I could even take those with me and just kind of like like sh like shuffle through them before I like go into an appointment or just to kind of you know. So I was just. Yeah, you know, just trying to make sure that I can do best I can. So good, and that's what you needed. That was the crutch you needed, you know, to yeah. get you through. Yeah, yeah like right. study to the last minute. And then... <laughs> <laughs> right, right. right. <laughs> so, when can do you mind talking about the um, the numbers for you purchase the home, and then if did any rehabs to it, and how long before you sold it? Uh, yeah. Um. So this home, um, I bought it for three thousand dollars. Um, she was asking five thousand. Uh, I was the. She found me off my off of one of my signs I put out, cool. um, and uh, she never even really marketed it. Uh, she was thinking to offer five grand, but she never even put it up for sale. Um, and so yeah, so I got it for three thousand. Um, there was some soft spots. There there was one soft spot that I knew, or two. I knew about two soft spots. Um, one by a back door and then one in a bedroom and then there was just some cosmetic stuff and some light fixtures missing and uh, stuff like that uh, but when I got into repairing it um, 
I noticed that the soft spot by the back door was much worse than I had really anticipated. It's a kind of, you know, I just didn't uh, look at it enough. I didn't like test the wall enough. Um, and once I had opened the back door a second time to show one of the contractors, uh, the door pretty much almost fell off. And then I was like hanging onto the wall and then I started like leaning on the wall and noticed the wall was loose. Um, so, uh, yeah, but that, all those repairs were about, uh, another thousand dollars. And then there was about another thousand dollars in carrying costs and taxes. Um, and so that was, uh, it was 6,000 altogether. I had into it when it was said and done. And then you had, no, actually, let me ask you with the, with the repairs, what would you have, well, A, what would you have done differently? And B, when you were walking through that home that first time, because you were new, did you feel a little, um, you know, I've been doing this for a while, so I'll go into a mobile home and I'll push things over. I mean, I'm going to turn on the hot water and let it run for a while. I'm going to flush toilet. I mean, I'm not, I'm going to, if I'm going to buy this home, I got to. I'm going to shake it and, you know, be kind of rough with it. Right, so right. were you being a little, do you feel in hindsight a little too gentle or you oh, don't want to be too, too snoopy? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I was just, you know, I didn't want to be too, yeah, I just didn't want to be too aggressive. I didn't want to, you know, just, yeah, I didn't want to shake things around. And yeah, so I was just like, well, you know, and yeah, definitely. Uh, and if I would have, if I would have been even just a little bit more, you know, aggressive, just a little, I, I would have found, you know, some stuff that... I could have <laughs> avoided. Perfectly understandable. So, okay. So, so then you had um, so many, you had a few people. Did you start showing it after the repairs or before the repairs? Uh, I started showing it after the repairs. So it took me like a month just to even get the handyman thing uh, taken care of and get someone actually out there. Um, so, but then, uh, yeah, it took me about a month at least to get someone to come out. And then he came out and did the repair. Uh, and then I started showing it like a week after that. I cleaned it up and you know took everything off the property and all that stuff. And then I started showing it about a week after. Any reason for the month to get to to get that handyman start started? Um, I did the Craigslist thing initially to find a uh, handyman, and it just uh, that did not work out. There was um, two guys that came out. Um, I had had six people I think I had six appointments set up and I figured a couple of those might not show so I was hoping for four that day and zero showed up um, and so then uh, I ran the ad again hoping maybe I might get someone I got two people um, I tried out one of those guys um, and when I met with him he was good responsive as far as the email and stuff he was real responsive uh, but when I met with him I just I didn't get the best feeling but he's like you know I'm you know, I'm just trying to, you know, get back on my feet. And so I figured, all right. And so I, there was a room that I really didn't need patched or painted. I wasn't planning on doing it. But rather than pay $1,000 or whatever it was to have him fix the bigger repairs, I figured I'd pay him 100 bucks or so to do the room. And that'd be like a test of him. And I'm really glad I did that because when I went to pay him and all, um, he just – he was not the guy for the job, and so uh, we just kind of decided to split the money in half and, you know, uh, part ways and be done with it. So. And then you did find someone that. And then yeah, I went to a local supply shop that I didn't know about. I went to the park, um, asked the park if they had anyone they recommended. They gave me a brochure of a local, you know, mobile home supply company. I went to that supply company. And then they gave me like five or six different business cards of people they recommended. And one of those guys ended up being able to come out in my time frame. And he did a really, really nice job. Good. That's a really – the mobile home parts store or nearby kind of repair shop store, yeah. they'll have some good connections. Mobile home park managers, not just the one where the home's in, but you know the surrounding area as well. And then Craigslist, the gig section, if you can really – put the ugliest pictures you can here's just what i need you know here's what i the men you know what i want to pay you and i mean try to screen as many people to not call you from that ad like only the people that call are all oh, right you know they're they want to well but then again so many people are going to call off off craigslist so i mean it just you the test the test job is so crucial i mean for folks listening to this try to get you had six people that said they wanted to come, that they were going to come, and nobody showed up. Yeah, no one people showed up. Talk is so cheap. Yeah. You know, people can say, oh, every, yeah, they have the most experience, but no. <laughs> Actions speak so much louder than words. Right. Give people those test jobs and then see who, yeah, see who doesn't complain, see who gets 
done on time, before time, under budget, is creative, problem solver. Yeah. Um, the is sober. So, yeah. <laughs> the, and then the, um, you did find a buyer. It was a no, no, no payments. Were you trying to sell it on payments and then you found a cash buyer? Yeah, I was absolutely trying to sell it on payments. Uh, you know, obviously in the ad, I, I said I'd take cash, but I was absolutely trying to sell it on payments. I wasn't really bringing up the cash thing. Um, but, you know, when they walked through, they asked me, they're like, well, would you take cash? And, I, you know, I told them, yeah, sure, definitely. <laughs> so um, we came to uh, $12,000 cash. And so, you know, I bought it for six and I doubled my money to 12. Right on. And so. it's excellent. It's not even, ta- not even tax time. Right, yeah. Right. You know, usually. That's, right. Well, right on. So the, okay, so first deal, bought, sold. Any time in that, um, after you purchased it and before you sold it, that you were, you know, with your wife, you know, just you and her, and you were confessing, and you're like, I don't know if this is, I did the right thing. Like, I'm having oh, some yeah. Yeah, serious definitely. doubts. Oh, yeah, yeah. okay. Was yeah, it yeah. on everything from just finding the handyman or wanting to, just even just doubting the home. I mean, was it a little like just was it the whole situation or was it mainly the home for it? Um, it it was, I, I guess it was kind of both. It wasn't even so much the home. I think it was the whole situation. Um, I guess just mobile home investing overall, you know, I'm, I'm like, you know, because I go to the real estate meetups or, you know, talk to some people and everyone's in single family. And so you kind of just know you're like, oh, that works out. That's, you know, you already know that that works. Um, but the mobile home thing, there's no one else that I can talk to about it. There's no one around <laughs> it's locally. No. Um, so I'm like, I don't know if this is going to work. And, you know, it, it might work, you know, in other areas. You know, maybe it doesn't work in the Detroit area. I don't know. Um, but, yeah, so that was, like, more the encompassing thing. And so we're like, well, we'll get this one taken care of and see how it goes. Uh, but, yeah, and then once, you know, once I started getting some people to show it, I had to drop the price once. Um, but once I started showing it and seeing that there was a decent amount of interest, I, I kind of was like, oh, this, this actually might be pretty pretty doable. <laughs> right on. Thank you so much for um, for being here. Oh, I guess I'll kind of ask one thing. This is a, um, sort of something I like to ask is, was there anything that you weren't expecting in this business? Anything weird or yeah, anything that we didn't talk about that you maybe weren't ex- 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 expecting? Uh, I think not expecting. Uh, I guess I I wasn't expecting how many uh, how easy it would be to buy homes. Uh, there is a lot of homes out there, and it definitely seems like. I mean, every single night I put out my signs, I get phone calls the next day. I mean, it's it's every like it's it's guaranteed that I'm going to get phone calls. They may not be the ones that I that I you know might not be a home that I end up buying, but um. I always get phone calls, uh, and so it's just I'm very surprised about that. Mainly from mobile homes. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely, all mobile homes. Yeah. How would you describe the buying market, uh, the buying demand in your area? Is it where, I mean, you know, places like Miami or California, people have thousands of dollars that they can just spend. You know, just throw money around, and then uh, in other areas, it's super depressed, and there's no movement at all. I mean, are there a healthy amount of buyers? As in, you know, and is it for the right price, or is it a? Do they not have hardly any money, or yeah? What's just the kind of overall? Uh, yeah, that? um, seems like most of our buyers, uh, they probably don't have much money. Uh, usually, uh, definitely has to be a lower price. Um, as far as a monthly payment, you know, if you advertise for that, uh, definitely gonna have to be a lower price. Um. And yeah, it definitely seems like the buyers uh, do not have much money or down payment. It probably averages about a thousand dollar down payment. Um, wow. And then the uh, the monthly payment for a three bedroom is definitely going to be you know under the eight hundred dollars uh, per month. So if that's what you're seeing, I mean, you're marketing for buyers, cash buyers, payment buyers. Those are the same. Well, the cash buyers, a lot of. A lot of your a lot of sellers in your area probably don't want payments, but you know they're looking for the same buyers that you're trying to find. Well, not the same ones, but you know they're having trouble finding cash buyers as well. So we kind of worked backwards. It kind of makes sense why when you put out signs or some you know advertising, yeah, you're getting calls because you're yeah. seeing the same thing as them. They're just they have a decent property, but unless it's just a couple thousand dollars, it's they're going to have a tough time selling it. Quickly. Yeah, yeah, right. definitely. 
that's yeah, and that's similar to a lot of areas around, around the country. Mm-hmm. Um, thank you again, Randy, for being here. You know that yeah, you can always um, email me anytime. Oh yeah, uh, day or night, and <laughs> please keep, keep in touch. But thank you so much for just coming on, and um, even just with this with this one deal. I mean, the takeaway that you've learned and just being there makes us going through all this BS, <laughs> yeah. you know, and anxiety like makes us such a more well rounded and experienced investor. So uh, yeah, many more to go. Yeah, and I hope so. Many, but yeah, cool. Thank you so much again for, for being yeah, here. Yeah, absolutely, John. Take care. Yeah, bye-bye.